Welcome to Master of the Game. I am Juice, and today we are going to talk about D&D 5e Monsters, and today we're talking about mummies. <laughs> so let's get started. Make sure you head on over to rpgjuice.com where you can get caught up on the latest videos, the latest news, and blog posts from Juice himself. All right, so I got my trusty monster manual here, and I am opened up to page 228. Uh, the coverage of it starts on 227, though, if you want to read some of the lore about, lore about mummies. Um, the cool thing about mummies and the thing that makes them different from zombies is that they are servants. Basically, whoever brought them back has power over them, and they will do what they're told to do by the person who brought them back. Um, mummy lords remember their, uh, their memories from when they were previously alive. Uh, they'll use their same weapons that they used to use when they were alive. Um, they're usually more powerful and come from a more powerful background than a typical mummy. Uh, some of the stuff that's really cool about mummies is they have this dreadful glare. The mummy targets one creature it can see within 60 feet of it. If the target can see the mummy, it must succeed on a DC 11 wisdom saving throw against this magic or become frightened until the end of the mummy's next turn. If the target fails the saving throw by five or more, it is also paralyzed for the same duration. Tar the target that succeeds is immune, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I like using conditions. Um, it's one of my favorite things when I'm playing with monsters. And the reason is because you can use it on your min-maxed players. Now, this is saying a wisdom save. So it's not going to work real well against your clerics uh, and your druids and things like that. However, something like this, if you have a fighter with an armor class of 18 and a strength of 18 and a constitution of 18, this is a great way to make him back off and your mummy can then attack your squishier members of the party. Again, conditions are fantastic ways to exploit your min-maxed characters. Um, you know, if you have some power gamers in your group, I actually don't mind it. Again, I like to exploit their weaknesses. You just need to know what their weaknesses are. So, again, that's just your regular mummy. Your mummy lord will have things like magic resistance, rejuvenation. Um, so, in other words, he'll come back uh, with a new body. Uh, they both have a rotting fist attack, uh, which is actually pretty powerful. Um, regular mummies are a CR3. Uh, they have 58 hit points, 11 armor class, speed of 20, kind of like your zombies. Um, your mummy lord has a higher armor class, higher hit points, is a challenge of 15. These aren't something you want to throw against first level parties. If you want to throw a regular mummy at your first level party, you can. And I would recommend just having it be just a solo mummy against your first level party of four. Um, you know, and you could probably do that against a second level party. Once you get to third level, you might want to throw in like two of them. Um, maybe have a big fight before they get to the mummy. And maybe that big fight is against like some fire beetles or something, something minor as well. Now, mummies obviously are usually in tombs. You can throw them in pyramids, crypts. You can basically use them in a lot of similar ways that you would use a zombie. Um, now, the idea, again, is that they always serve their masters, whether it's protecting their gold or um, protecting a crypt, things like that. Um, I don't tend to have them serve any masters. Uh, that's not usually how I use mummies. I usually just have mummies as kind of like the Egyptian lore. They were wrapped before they were put in their tomb. And uh, if their tomb is startled, they wake up. That's how I like to use my mummies. Um, but reading the lore in here, you you know, I get ideas and I get inspired to be like, well, what could I do with a, a mummy? You know, I could, again, have a necromancer who has former soldiers that he, you know, that were friends in life and now that they're dead, he's mummified them so they serve him. 
I like that idea. I think that's cool. And give them their own, like, area in his dungeon or his castle or fortress or tower, whatever. Uh, I think that's a cool way to use it. Um, mummy lords, man, they're brutal. Like, if you're throwing this at your players, you probably don't like your players' characters very much. Because these are going to wreck your group. They have spells like Sacred Flame. Obviously, that's a cantrip. Uh, harm, if you go to 6th level. Insect Plague. Guardian of Faith, Animate Dead, so they can bring up Servants. Hold Person, Silence. Spiritual Weapon, again, and you guys know, if you've played Clerics, Spiritual Weapon is huge. This is your Mummy Lord we're talking about. He's got abilities that allow him to do things to your party that are going to wreck them. Guiding Bolt, so Mummy Lords are no joke. Um, they're going to mess you up, no doubt about it. The dreadful glare, multi attack, um, yeah, they're they're pretty pretty bad. So that's all I'm gonna say about mummies. Uh, I want to encourage you to go out and use them. There's a lot of cool ways. And leave a comment below with how you use mummies. Maybe if you don't like something I'm talking about, let me know. If you do like something or you feel inspired, I'd love to hear below. So. This is your first time here. I hope you will smash that subscribe button and hammer that like button. This was Master of the Game. I am Juice. Game on.